Primjet je tu cijen kto upali vajeca po cipografi. Thanks Michael for my video who helped me learn this stuff. And that's about all Russian I can. But now let's start with web typography and how you should all save web typography. As Vitaly already told you, my name is Oliver Schöndorfer. I'm a visual designer who's interested in code. And I'm also co-founder of 8660 in Vienna. We are a two-man design studio offering strategic design and branding for various media. And we are working for clients directly together with some um, in-house design teams, but also with other agencies. And there's the thing where my part comes in is the visual design. And here I have to admit something to you. I'm madly in love with everything type. I'm delighted by well-shaped serifs and I'm infuriated or sad <laughs> because of bad kerning and other stuff. Yeah, so I even canceled my bank account once because I wasn't satisfied with the redesign of their logo type. So you see, this is how serious I am about typography. And you will be too after this talk. By far, the biggest part of information on the web is written language. The thing is, most websites don't present text properly. They serve you something like this. And you might say, what's wrong with it? it looks pretty average to me. OK. The thing is, typography is very subtle, but yet very powerful. You can all know these situations when you had to increase the font size in your browser or you had to switch to reader's mode to get a more pleasant experience or you highlighted the text so that you do not lose track of the line. So, typography is what comes between the writer and the reader. And if it's done wrong, it brings big disadvantages for users, usability, accessibility. You can't read the text properly, this is worse. So, why is that? I don't think that anybody wants to do a bad job. I think there's a gap between design and development. Designers often don't know what technical possibilities they have, and developers have to compensate for that, not knowing what they should pay attention to. So, this even got harder in times of responsive web design. And when you think about it, comparing this to designing a book or a brochure, we never had so little typographic control. We don't know on what device people are, what operating system they are using, what display they have, what fonts they have loaded correctly or not, what fallback fonts there are installed, and maybe they don't even look at our website on our website. Maybe they look at it on Instapaper or Pocket, or they listen to it through Cortana or Siri. So we never had so little typographic control compared to designing a book or a magazine. Now the good news. We never had so much typographic control like today on the web. We have CSS, web fonts, new browsers and devices updating constantly, and the possibilities that are just opening up with variable fonts, these are the golden times for good typography, my friends, on the web, to make the web more readable for everyone. So what I'm going to show you today are five steps towards good reading typography on the web. And you will see several dem uh, examples, some demos, and this should cover you to boost your next web project with good and decent typography. Most of this talk focuses on Latin script, mainly English. I sprinkled in some Cyrillic script for you guys. The only Russian I can was the one you heard before. Neither can I read it, nor can I, uh, I write or speak it, but I researched this stuff so it's more useful to you. Maybe I got some details wrong. If I do, 
please come to me and tell, tell us after the talk so that we can correct that. But um, I think it would be most useful for you all if it has some Cyrillic and Russian conventions in typography included as well. So it was nice researching that. So are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for great typography? Let's turn this horrible piece of mediocrity into that. <laughs> yeah. Looks boring, but it works. Typography. Let's get started. Number one. We always have to choose a typeface first, because when we choose a typeface, everything else depends on the choice of our typeface. <laughs> there certainly are not. There are badly used typefaces. Comic Sans is the least problem of this logo type. <laughs> it's so messed up in so many ways. So Comic Sans doesn't matter. So, yeah. To make it fast and easy for you, you can distinguish between two kinds of typefaces. There are display typefaces, and there are text typefaces. And because you can distinguish between these two, you can make it more difficult. Type classification is a great subject on its own. Very interesting, but let's keep it simple. Let's, let's fix something on ah, okay. I'm getting fixed. <laughs> it's good. So, this is a display typeface, and you never ever should use it for your body text, as you can see here. It's got very strong contrast. It's great for conveying a certain message or atmosphere to set a mood. And it works in large sizes. It doesn't work in small text sizes, as you can see here. So don't use a display typeface. And don't get confused by the word display. It refers to display sizes 24 pixels and, uh, and bigger, not to a computer display. And this is a text typeface. And what you see here is that there's nothing to see. It's boring, understated, it gets out of the way, it lets the words speak because content is king and not design. Nobody, normal people, not typographers, will see anything special about this. And this is why it's good for large amounts of text. Now's the big question, I'm sure you all have it in your mind all the day. Should I use sans or should I use serif? One might be good, the other one may be bad. But when it comes to readability, there's no advantage of one over the other. It's more about conveying a topic or an atmosphere. So if you use a uh, sans serif, most people perceive it as modern and universal. But you could also see it as very dry and replaceable. If you're using an serif typeface, you could say it's very elegant and traditional. But on the other hand, maybe it's a bit too old-fashioned or conservative. It always depends on what project you're using it for and if it fits your project. So nothing is good or evil. Who of you cannot read this line? Who cannot read it? Some people cannot read it. The majority of you can read it. Is it magic? No, it's good typography. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, we read words by the top half, and we recognize the letter shapes there. And on the left side, you see a very geometrical sans serif with very similar letter shapes. On the right side, you have a serif typeface. In the middle, you have a sans serif with distinguishable letter shapes. So it's easier to read the one in the middle and the right one. The left one you would never, should never, never ever use for your body text. Good? So <laughs> depends on unique letter forms. And then, of course, when choosing a typeface, now we have legible letter uh, forms, 
We should consider what application do we need it for? Do we need bold, regular, italics? What kind of font styles do we need? Look for a font family that contains those styles. And this doesn't look that good. And it's because we don't have the right character set in here. Think about language support, and not only language support with certain characters, also with different alphabets. So if you need a typeface that works in Cyrillic, of course you need one, but then you choose a typeface that contains those alphabets, or Greek, or Hebrew, or whatever. So summing up this first part, how you choose a proper text typeface, easy. No display typeface. Boring is always better, isn't it? <laughs> and sans serif are both fine. Now you can stop arguing with anyone. Serif is the best, sans is the best for display. Shut up. It's about distinguishable letter forms. Now you know that. And you can brag with it. And keep the application in mind. Think of where you want to use this. So now. Let's switch in our example and change our typeface here to a nice font family with serifs, in this case, meta serif. Second part. <coughs> Harmonic measurements. It's not only the typeface you choose, you can also mess up badly if you do not treat it right. Treat your type right. So there are three things you have to consider when working with your typeface. And one is font size, line length, and line height. I added some CSS here. We all know this. This is no rocket science. Um, this is here a uh, 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 spoiler alert. There won't be any fancy CSS shit here. It's so basic CSS but you all do it wrong, or maybe you don't, I don't know. But the easiest things are the things that you mostly do wrong. So, and if you change one of these parameters, you might have to adjust the others as well. So, starting with font size. It's always about the size, isn't it? Unfortunately. The size should be adapted to the reader's distance from the device. Usually, I hold my smartphone much closer to my body, so the text could be a bit smaller, because it's closer to my body. But if I'm sitting in front of my giant 27-inch display in the office, it's further away, so I should increase my font size there. And this is what most people don't do, and it's just awful. So adapt the size of your text to the uh, viewer's distance from the device, which means on large displays, it could be bigger. On small displays, maybe slightly smaller, but only maybe. Remember the bigger part. Bigger is better. But bigger from 16 pixels. This is the default. So 1M is 16 pixels by default. Don't don't, please don't go below that. And because I suffer, and I suffer a lot. And when I'm trying to recreate from bad typography what I'm trying to do a lot, I'm going online, look around, maybe a nice spa in Austria, and what do I get there? No way on my 27-inch display. What did they do? Whoa, no, no. It's 11.2 pixels? <laughs> Are you kidding me on my 27 inch? No relaxation for me here, so. The next one, line length and line height, and they work together very, very tightly. And to show you this, it's best to show you a demo. A recorded demo, of course, because I would mess up doing it live. So before I show you this demo, uh, you need to know there's an ideal line length, and the ideal line length is around 60 to 80 characters long. Brenda told you before about the characters unit. It's very handy, but you could also use M's. One M roughly fits two characters, and it's never about the exact number of 60 to 80 characters. It's always about what, you, what it looks like 
also with the typeface you chose. So I'm starting here and adding my max width to get my 60 to 80 characters, and I'm adding it with, let's say, 30 M's, then this would be 60 characters, oh, and this looks quite okay. On my right side, I want to have an even typographic color, so I'm adjusting it a bit more, 35, I think the line is too long now, so let's get to 33, ah, getting some gaps there. 32, also some gaps, it's even worse. Let's stick with 33, that works fine, I guess. And, but now it's too tight, the lines are too tight, so I need to add some line height to them to make them easier to read. So I'm adding, let's say, 1.5, it's okay, or 1.6 even, ah, oh, much better. Now I've got some air to breathe. This works fine for a desktop layout. But let's simulate mobile here by adding a width to the body. It's very hacky, <laughs> but OK. And what worked for desktop doesn't work for mobile anymore, because now the lines look very loose. You don't want to read that, do you? So let's reduce it to 1.3 then. And what do we get? Ah, did it stop? Yeah. So um, what I want to say, uh, just get, yeah, what I want to say for it now is you have to adapt this font size and uh, the, the line height and the line length. And knowing that 18 characters are the ideal length of a, of a line, going on Wikipedia, checking out typography, typography isn't this ironic. And what do I get here? 190 characters? Are they kidding me? Again, they did it again to me. They really should add a max width to this container. So summing up how you can treat your text good, at least 16 pixels font size for your body text. Big screens means bigger text. That's easy to remember. Or wider screens means bigger text. Ideal line is around 60 to 80 characters long. In Russian, it might be around 80. In German, it is more around 80 because we have longer words. And longer lines need more line height. And other line, uh, less lines need less line height. So moving on, taking our example here, and now bumping up the font size, that's better adding some space. Now I can breathe. Beautiful. Chapter 3. Beware of justified text. This is an example of an Austrian website. And you might say justified text looks always nice and tidy from a distance. But this doesn't mean that it's easier to read. It sure doesn't. And if I look at this website on mobile, what do I get here? I get some gigantic gaps in between words. This doesn't look good. If I do it in English, the broad column works, the narrow column again. W what's happening there? Look at these gaps. This looks like cheese. I don't want to read cheese. No, it's really horrible. And you, it's a trade-off. You, tra you trade evenness of space for tightness of layout. And it's harder to read, and especially for people with reading disabilities, it's harder to read. And it just looks disgusting. And it also looks disgusting in Cyrillic. So <laughs> when I found this website, which was featured on some CSS kind of stuff, I looked at it on mobile. Oh my god! Look at these holes there, oh my god. I tweeted to them, and they ignored me, of course, but <laughs> yeah. So my advice on how to use justified text, don't use justified text on the web. Yes. Never. If you, if you take away only one message from this talk, please make it this. Forget about the rest. Everything will be better. So removing the ugly justified text here, 
beautiful. And there's a reason for text align left being the default, so. Next one, fake fonts. You thought fake news were a threat to our society. You haven't learned about fake fonts yet. And after this talk, you will know about it, and they will haunt you, and you will never forget about it. Welcome to my world. So we're in the middle of the talk. Everybody's excited. Typography, give me more. Yes, and I will give you more by playing a little game, and I call it Spot the Fake Font. Let's try this out. What is a fake font? A fake font is an artificially <coughs> angled or boldened weight by the browser. The browser isn't, it's not the browser's fault, it's your fault because you didn't care and you didn't pay attention. The browser just does what he's supposed to do. So, what's a fake font? Here we have a real italic and a fake italic. Where is the fake italic? Is the first line the fake italic? Is the second line the fake italic? Oh, less of you. Make it even easier, I added some Cyrillic here. <laughs> and I think for you guys, it might be more obvious. Most of you said the first line is the fake italic, and you are perfectly right, because as we can see here, an italic is not just, uh, just an angled version of the upright. It's got different letter shapes different construction principles. So when you look at the Latin script here, there are different ones. I think in Cyrillic there are even more. I don't know exactly, but there are even more different letter shapes. And it feels kind of off. So next one, what is the first one, the fake bold? Is the second one the fake bold? Ah, and you're not so sure, okay? And I see that because it's not that easy, because you don't know what's the regular like. But in this case, the second one is the true bold, and the first one is the fake one. The browser doesn't do such a bad job by bolding it, but the thing is, when you look at some paragraphs now, the first um, paragraph is the fake font paragraph, the bold doesn't stand out that much. And this means, it's not emphasizing text. Why do I need a bold font style to emphasize something? And if it doesn't stand out, it doesn't make any sense. It's just irritating. So when you look at this bold font size, on the, on the bottom part, this stands out. And the italics, they just feel right. They're not some distorted mutants that haunt me in my dreams. They are beautiful. They have rhythm. And just, yeah, it, it just hurts. So how can you avoid this? And this is fairly easy, so giving you a code demo on here. Here I've loaded one Google font, and this one Google font uh, has only one weight loaded, so the browser replaces it by faking the other weights because it, the, it doesn't have them at hand. So you see the fake ones, disgusting, yeah. Bold, disgusting, and bold italic is even the worst. And what I'm doing now is I'm just adding my other weights. It's that easy. And now take a look on the left side, and you will see how it updates instantly and looks much better. And that's an italic, yes. Look on the left side again. Bold. And bold italic. Beautiful. Easy. <laughs> so just do it. But there's another case, you have a very weird headline here. And the problem here is that we added a fancy Google font for our heading, but we didn't pay much attention to the user agent styling. And so the browser, it might look bold, but it's not really bold, because there's only font, one font weight containing this uh, typeface. So what I have to add here is, think about my user agent styling, I have to add my font weight normal to improve it. Look again on the left side now, and bam, this is how it's supposed to look like. And this happens a lot, because people forget about this unintentional bolding. On the first line, you have the fake bolding. On the second line, you have the true font. And this creates weird effects on your text. So 
you don't want that, and now you know about it, and now you will see it everywhere. I assure you this. So when I was researching, I thought maybe some fake news, sorry, fake fonts. Um, I don't understand any word on this page. I can't read Russian, but I can read typography. And this doesn't look like a true italic to me, does it? <laughs> really? No, they, oh my god, it just hurts. Even in Cyrillic, I can't read it, but it hurts my body. Much better. Replace it. Open Sans has italics for a reason. <sighs> now I believe every word that is written there. Much better. Yeah. So how can you fight fake fonts? Pretty easy. Load all the fonts you need. Then if a style is not available, adapt your default styling and beware of user agent styling. So I try to add a fake font in here and now this is typographic color. Now it stands out. This is what bold should look like. Last one, number five, the devil and the details. We will talk about the details first, the devil later. On this page, on my demo page, I have a lot of punctuation marks and they are the details. And they are precious, so treat them right. I highlighted them all here. And punctuation marks are the glue that bind your text together. They give your text meaning. They make it understandable and readable. And if they are done wrong, they create a lot of irritations for everyone. And maybe some different meaning uh, even. So maybe you stumbled across my errors I added in there before. But why ha do we have so many of these errors? People not knowing might be one thing. The other thing might be we are living in a post-typewriter society. So there are a lot of typewriter habits that are still used today. And here's some secret knowledge for you all. A computer is not a typewriter. I think you know that. And we're going to talk about quotation marks, apostrophes, and dashes now. These are really tiny details, but they count. Other question for you all. What are the correct English quotation marks? First line? Second line? Third line? OK, you all think first line. Somebody said no, and he's right. Fool you all. First one, double prime marks. We love them, we need them for coding, but we do not need them in our text. And if you go to the toilet, there's a wrong quotation mark there too. There should be a prime mark for the source of the image, but it's not. It wouldn't work in, H in, in HTML then. So, Second one is the worst, I guess, accents not proper quotation marks. Third one, angle brackets. We need them as well in our HTML, but we do not need them in our, um, in our quotes. So these are the correct one, curly quotes in English, in German, and also in Russian for the nested quotes. And then the guillemets in Russian and, of course, in French as well. And I'm finding it pretty um, amusing that Russian uses French and German inside. So. <laughs> the thing is, why is this important? You can see that the English, um, English curly quotes, they hug the text. It's, it's, it's tender. You know where the, where the quote starts and where it ends. And this is now a great time to take a picture or to download the slides later. I installed a Russian keyboard on my computer and I figured out what these shortcuts are. They work, so now you don't have any excuse not using them anymore. It was hard for me. <laughs> and you also have the HTML entity there for English, then for the German or Russian nested quotes, and for the primary quotation marks in Russian and French.
Apostrophe. Yeah. I'm sure you all know that this is a wrong apostrophe. Connie did not know that. And this is the reason why she closed down. You can see <laughs> on the poster there, it says to rent. Bad typography can hurt your business. <laughs> Don't do that. What are the correct apostrophes here? First one. Second one. Third one. You're not so sure. <laughs> All wrong. <laughs> again, got you again. Single prime mark, like before. We need this for coding. Accents, again, and it creates a gigantic gap between these words. Disgusting. Second one, this is hard. It's a left single quote. Almost. Correct one is this. Now let's take a closer look. And to remember it, it looks like a tiny number nine. And you can find it on your keyboard here. Moving on to our last lovely character. What are the correct dashes in English? First one. Good. Second one. Yeah. Third one. They're both fine, I guess. So first one is not. I'm very, very proud of you guys, really. It's a hyphen. And it is horrible if you use it. It's for hyphenating and for, for um, combining words. Second one is an N dash. And in British English, you will use that with some spaces around. And the last one is an M dash. And you lose this dash a lot. You really use it a lot, I found out. And, um, you would get it, it's pretty easy to get. It's only alt and hyphen in, in German and on Russian keyboards as well. And in American English, they would use it without the space, what always drives me crazy. But yeah, it's only my pers uh, how I perceive it because I'm not used to it, I guess. So, we talked about the details. Let's talk about the devil. <laughs> you're, not, you're not that anti-Trump. <laughs> when I first did this presentation, somebody just got inaugurated, and I took a look at this website, and what did I find there? <laughs> oh my God, how many mistakes can you make in one tiny box? We get a single prime mark for quotation, uh, for, for apostrophe, so sad. We get a double prime mark instead of curly quotes, what a mess. And we get dashes instead of hyphens, total disaster. Horrible, let's replace this. Let's replace this with a proper apostrophe with great curly quotes, with Beautiful N dashes. I'm using N dashes here because I think they're better. <laughs> Tremendous, looks much better. Let's make typography great again. <laughs> so summing this up, removing our false quotation marks, much better. Now you can all go to bed with easy sleep because it's beautiful, best website ever. What should you remember from this talk now? How you all will and have to and now are obligated to because you learned to save web typography. You choose a boring text typeface first. Second, you set your text in 16 pixels upwards. You never, ever, ever, ever use justified text on the web. Thank you. You load the fonts you need and the styles you need. You prevent fake fonts. And you care about punctuation marks. They care about you. Please care about them. Thank you.
Well done, Oliver. Would you like to join me for a little conversation? So, typography, huh? Yeah. Do you sleep at nights? Do you dream in letters? Do uh, you feel like sometimes some nightmares, like normal people have nightmares about stuff, you probably have nightmares about kerning? I have nightmares about kerning, and it's also when I was preparing a talk about variable fonts, I saw them morphing in my dreams. I don't know if it's sad or not. <laughs> it was probably not. It was sad. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was very exhausting. So then there is a main question coming from Marina. Oliver, what do you think about losing capital letters in attendees and companies' names at the conference typography on the badges? <laughs> what about losing capital letters? Just lowercase all the way. Are you pro lowercase? The thing is, I'm from Austria, and in German we have so many uppercase words, because every noun is an uppercase word. And um, so I think they are great indicators for you to tell you when a new sentence starts again, or something new starts, or it gives an importance for a word, uh, for, for, for a name or something. So I would definitely be pro uppercase letters. It's easier to read and to understand. Okay, uh, so when it comes to web fonts, we have some web font loading issues I every now and again. Yeah. No, not here, just, I mean, on the <laughs> web as well, I think. <laughs> uh, and in many ways, it's, we always talk about mobile first, content first, you know, uh, but very often it's web font loading first, or to be specific, link underlines first, Yeah. right? So there is always this switch from between the fallback font and the web font, and very often it's very jarring. Yeah. It's really, it feels kind of wrong and then everything is messed up. Yeah. So what can you do to kind of minimize it maybe? Like it, would you search for a fallback font that's kind of similar or how would you approach this? I think people should really pay attention to the fallback fonts because um, nowadays it's not that hard to find web safe fonts. On Android you only have the system fonts there. There's no Arial, no Helvetica, no Verdana, nothing there. So um, at first you would have to find a proper fallback font and here's the designer saying that better to see the content than the proper typeface because I think it's more important to deliver something and then improve it later. There's a great uh, CSS uh, trick um, with a font size adjust, by, but it only works, I'm destroying the dream now, in Firefox where you can uh, check out what's the ratio between um, the uppercase letters and the lowercase letters and then it adjusts the text in this way so you won't have this uh, bumpiness when it's switching. Yeah. There's also this tool by Monica Dinchulescu which is called Font match styler that allows you to essentially add some spacing, uh, let letter spacing and stuff to letters to make the switch a little bit less yeah. impactful. Yeah. Um, how do you think the typography is going to change, like looking overall in the scope of the next few years or so, with the beautiful advent of variable fonts? Yeah, I think And maybe also a few things about what they are. Yeah. Just to explain. It. Yeah, variable fonts. Actually, it's one font file that can behave like many font files because you can store all the font weights in one single file and tell the file how it should behave and all the tiny steps in between. So you could get font weight 421 if you would like to. And um, you could also do this with italics, uh, with an italic axis and mary, many other adjustments. And I think it will reduce uh, file size for some cases, mm -hmm. if you need more than three or four weights. And it will also uh, enable designers to be more expressive with typography for headlines, introduction text, quotation marks, uh, pull quotes, this stuff. Um, I think this is something where we will benefit from it. I don't think variable fonts will have that kind of impact for body text, because for body text we will only need two or three font styles, regular, bold, italic, like Björn showed you today. Okay, all right, uh, that's good to know. All right, so with this in mind, I hope that, uh, because we're running a little bit out sure. of time, I was I talking you'll be outside, you will, you will not leave this building I will until not leave every this single building. typographic problem will be resolved. I'm happy for everyone to chat with me about typography. So if you feel like kerning adjustment, just let us know. We can arrange it in the break. I was tempted using the time of my talk in doing that, but I didn't. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thanks. Thanks.